What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zerling, Ken Zika Milligan, the villain from the Trilligan, and we are back on Tsukihime. Last episode, damn, we, we got confirmation that we have Rola inside of us, right? And then we went to get help from S.H.I.E.L.D. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. was like, oh, yeah, I got you. Don't worry about it. And then she pulled up on bad time when it was about to fucking murder us, right? But before she murdered us, we was like... No, we was like, bro, just just do it, man. Like, I don't even fuck with Roa for real, man. Just kill me. I ain't gonna hurt you. And then she was like, damn, why are you so agreeable? And then we started kissing her and shit. And then she was like, look, bro, I'll take you to the church in a, in a bit. So just chill in my room and we go, we gonna get this shit situated. So we chilled in the room got shit, and, and now we're waiting to get shit situated. But before we started waiting to get shit situated, we blew her fucking back out. And now we're in chapter 12. Y'all fuck with my explanation. 12th day, November 1st, Monday. The room feels empty without shield here. It's past 7 in the morning. My body still feels tired after everything that happened last night. Monday. Normally it would be time for me to go to school, but Shields firmly told me not to leave this room. It's better if I don't go anywhere until Shield returns. Having to tell Akiha I won't be coming back for a while. And to Kohaku... It can't be forgiven, but the fact is I have to apologize to her. It's painful to leave those two things aside, but right now I think dealing with Roa takes priority. I pull the sheets over my head. Resisting the tightness I feel in my chest, I fall asleep once more. Has your goal changed? No, the goal itself has not changed. I aim for eternity. I tried to seek out eternity for no reason. That was really a pure, undefiled will. Changed. I've changed. My goal. The goal of attaining eternity has been degraded to a means to an end. How ugly is this? I understand so myself, yet I cannot change my heart. That woman. Because of that woman. Because of that woman, I became impure. But what do I do? The human species does not have the power to live for a thousand years. Mentally and physically, a human vessel cannot resist the wearing down of time. Even if you gained an immortal body as a vampire, you cannot stop the aging of the mind. You can stop the aging, but that is only a half, a halt. There is no meaning to a mind which is stopped. I have to exist with the purity of my essence preserved. Unless I can be like that, I won't reach that woman. As expected, I will use the method of reincarnation. Restarting from birth, being myself and dying once more. In this cycle, I can exist while preserving the purity of myself. What I regret is that I've lost my original purity. I, like those other pitiful wretches, am wishing to continue existing as myself as it is right now. It is the first time I knew hate. Because everything, it was, a down, it was a downfall which would never occur if that woman did not exist. That woman? I remember a strong will and wake up. That woman. Throb. Ouch. Throb. This woman I know. Throb! God! What is this headache? It isn't, it isn't natural. Ah! I hold my head with both hands. It hurts. I've never felt pain like this before. My head, my head feels like it's being hit with a hammer. Ah! Stop, stop! If this, if this keeps up, it'll split apart. My head will shatter apart. Gah! My body convulses. It hurts. It won't it ever stop? Yeah! It hurts so much that I smash my head against the table. A shattering sound. The glass table breaks into pieces. Blood flows from my forehead, but it doesn't hurt one bit. More than that, this head, more, more than that, this headache that comes for no reason is far more. Unbearable. I can't even pass out. How many seconds? How many minutes? How many hours will this pain last? 
Help! It hurts. Trying to do something about it, I stab my hand with my knife. It's no good. It doesn't hurt at all. Shield. Shield has not come back yet. I look at the clock and it isn't even noon. It hasn't even been an hour since I woke up. There's another 20 hours until tomorrow morning. Just knowing that almost makes me go insane. Throb, throb, throb. I don't even know how long I withstood this pain. I passed my limit long ago. With all this pain, I'll die long before S.H.I.E.L.D. comes back. Gah! If I'm in this room, this headache will stay. Outside. I have to go outside or I'll go insane. I can't. S.H.I.E.L.D. told me not to leave this room. But if I stay here, I'll die before Roa takes over me. I'm staying. I can't. My legs head toward the door. For no reason. I really wanted to see the golden moon. Oh shit. The lines won't disappear. The wavering in my vision worsens. The night city is shrouded in a white fog, as if it was a city that died thousands of years ago. There's no sign of anyone else. A cocoon that's like a spider's web is everywhere on every building. It's terribly quiet, like a dead city at the bottom of a vast ocean. In that illusion, I still walk. Overhead, the large golden moon shines radiantly. Is it the mercy of the moon? My headache has disappeared and my head is in a daze. Under the moon. As if under a spell, I continue walking. Night hangs over the park. I'm in the middle of my hazy vision. There is one figure that looks clear. For some reason, it seems like the other me wanted this. The moonlight is strong. Under the light as bright as the sun. There, Arukai stands dressed in white. It's been a while. Isn't it isn't it a wonderful new moon? Fuck! It's been a while. Isn't it a wonderful moon tonight, Shiki? Arukai. Didn't you go back? No, I haven't fulfilled my objective yet. I can't go back before then, can I? Effortlessly. Arakai looks at me with crimson eyes. My breathing stops in my throat. An unnatural pressure. Nothing like when I confronted Senpai. This is the pressure that I feel being confronted as her enemy. I can't breathe. My throat doesn't move. If I do such extraneous movement, she would tear it out at that moment. Stupid shaky. This wouldn't have happened if you didn't side with that woman. Arakai shows just a brief moment of pity. Then her eyes light up with pure delight like a happy child. So how is it, Shiki? How does it feel to have Roa inside you? The white vampire princess speaks with indescribable enmity in her voice. Feeling the danger that sends chills up my spine, I clearly realize the situation. Standing before me is Arakai was trying to kill me. Our distance is about seven meters. Damn it. With an opponent like this, you can't even feel safe with a hundred meters, but she's only seven meters away. What kind of nonsense are you saying? I confirm that the knife is in my pocket and play dumb. It's useless, you know? In the first place, Roa was made into a dead apostle by me. It's very easy for me to tell where the person who stole my power is. I see. Come to think of it, Shield said it before. That Roa became a vampire because he had his blood sucked by Arakai. I don't know why. I don't know why. There have been 17 reincarnations before this, but this is the first time this has happened. She doesn't even move one bit. There is no reason for her to come any closer, because this is well within her range. Crimson eyes. Being stared at by them, my headache returns again. Throb, throb, inside my head. The vampire called Roa is wanting to emerge. Certainly I can sense Roa. Back then, Roa must have transmitted himself to you. I really don't understand why though. It hurts. Every time Arakai says his name, 
The memories of this guy rage in my brain. Throb, throb, throb. Where was it? Deep in the mountains, an old castle. The figure of a solitary girl bound there. Only that is burned into this man's soul, which has already become only a memory. I don't understand. Even though she was a true ancestor, she was not even told the meaning of her own existence, was only used as a tool to hunt fallen true ancestors. She herself does not receive any wounds whatsoever. The girl painted only in crimson blood of her enemies. Not knowing words, the woman just the woman was just looking up at the moon as if she was some sort of idiot. Overhead, the huge golden moon. In that withering courtyard, only her figure was distinct. He felt her figure was beautiful. For the first time since he was born. Probably. No, definitely the only time in his life. Michael Roa Valdejong fell in love with that white woman. This is the first time. Not an impulse, but truly Roa's heart. The only remaining emotion. Roa's personality had long died, but it continues to exist without disappearing, that eternal memory. I see. That's why he hated Arukite so much. The woman who stole his purity, just an instant. He saw her for only an instant, but his heart was stolen. That he hated true ancestor. That hated true ancestor that caused his purity to fall. That existence. He hated everything about that white vampire princess. What a mistake. What a mistake it was. Roa hated her so much that he reincarnated so many times and always waited for Arakai to come pursue him each time. For that, he did anything. He deceived Arukai, fooling her when she didn't even know she was a vampire, and let her suck his blood. Becoming a dead apostle of Arukai, he used her power to destroy the remaining true ancestors and waited for her. Why did he not understand? That hate caused him to reincarnate and wait for Arukai. That hate that caused him to reincarnate and wait for Arukai, that isn't hatred. The man called Roa was so pure, he didn't even understand his own emotions. To think about someone else so much, it makes you go almost crazy. That feeling is very similar to hatred, but merely a single word. This man called Roa could have been told that his feeling was love. He wouldn't have made this mistake. For just an instant, no, for a long time. I saw the dream of the instigator of it all. The man who reincarnated to stay in the present. You're pretty composed. You're in front of me and not even running away. And did you already give up, Shiki? Give up? What am I going to give up about? I won't lose to Roa. Tomorrow for sure. She will return. So until then, I can't let myself be killed by Arukai. Huh? I didn't think you could still bluff around. I really thought over half of you was taken over by Roa already. I see, that's how it is. Her voice sounds happy. I don't know it's so enjoyable, but it seems she still does have those kinds of human feelings. Then if I can do something, maybe there will be a chance to run away. I don't know what you think you understood, but I'll settle this thing with Roa myself. Oh. I don't know what you think you understood, but I'll settle this thing with Roa myself. I won't lose to Roa. If you say you, you want to kill Roa, then I'll kill him myself for you. So you can just... I won't listen if you tell me to go back. You intend to get the help of the church, right? I refuse to let them seal away Roa. Shiki, I want to eliminate Roa so I can get back my power. So you know, if I don't do it myself, it will be meaningless. Then no matter what, you're going to kill me, Arukai. But Shiki, the row inside you is very weak. He probably can't take away a person's will unless he's born into their body. He somehow managed to transmit himself into to you, but that was all he could do. He's only able to live as your dark side. Huh? Does that mean Roa's will is almost nothing in me? Arukai, that means, yes. 
There's no need for me to kill you if that's the case. I'm fine just having the power Rola stole from me working under me. She's saying there's no need for me to be killed. So why does she come to see me? Why is she looking at me with those serious eyes? I don't understand. What are you trying to say, Arakai? I'm telling you to become my servant. What? She doesn't seem like she's joking. When Arakai and Senpai were fighting, she said it was just a joke. What? That wasn't a joke? No. I like you. So isn't it natural for me to want you by my side rather than to kill you? Snap. With that line, my headache pounds more than it ever has before. Roa. The guy inside my head rages against her words. I don't know if that comes from the light or from deep jealousy. If you're willing to become my servant, I'll stop Roa from consuming you. I don't think you even need to- I don't even- I don't think you even need to think about it, seeing how Roa will consume you like this. You say it so simply, but how do you intend to stop this Roa inside me? Huh? The only thing you can stop Roa is you, Shiki. But that method would mean your death. My method is simply strengthening you. As long as your will is stronger than Roa's, then it doesn't matter how much he rages in you, right? Something bursts in my head again. Roa keeps raging. Don't let her fool you! He rages. This woman wants to make you her puppet. Ah. I take a deep breath. I won't believe Roa's words, but even I can understand. The Arakai now is slightly different from the one I knew. Certainly, what she says might possibly stop Roa, but a heart strong enough to resist these headaches means a heart that is so strong it won't feel anything. I take off my glasses. I take the knife out of my pocket. I take the blade out and hold it at eye level. Shaking, I refuse. Sorry, but I won't be yours to possess because Sheila's is going to come back. I see. Then I guess I'll just have to, then I guess I'll just have to be by force. Fuck! Then I guess it'll just have to be by force. A hard footstep cracks through the air. You killed me once, so I always thought I should pay you back. Her white figure rushes forth with a gust of wind. In that instant, the fight begins. Oh shit. Clang! Her claws meet my knife. Under the golden moon, even if she is my enemy, her figure is still beautiful. Clang! We repel each other again. To be honest, I can't even see her movements. Clang! We repel each other once more. Arakai isn't serious at all. But still, it should be easy for her to rip off my arms and legs. Clang! We repel each other again. My body moves without thinking. My arms and legs, this body, with just the intention of not dying, fends off Arakai's claws by itself. My lips curl in irony. I don't want to admit it, but it seems my body has become beyond that of a human's. In the dead of night, it seems Tono Shiki has become like Shiki, probably able to easily jump off the third floor of a building and be just fine. Clang! But this is it. From the very start, I knew I couldn't win against Arakai. First of all, I can't see any lines on her. I have no way of hurting her. Arakai said it once. That during nighttime, there's nothing which can cause her death. Clang! She hits my knife. With just a swing of her arm, I fly through the air. I manage to land on the ground and ready my knife. No matter how much I look, I can't see any lines on her. Damn it! What nonsense are you? Yes, I'm so right. In the deep night without mercy of the sun, facing the princess of the moon is too reckless. <laughs> Oh, my throat is burning. My heart feels like it'll explode. I realize that since I saw her tonight, I was under the pressure of her crimson eyes and I haven't been able to breathe well. Have you realized it yet? She isn't even out of breath. Even though I'm gasping for air and my heart feels like it'll stop, she's completely relaxed. Jeez, you really are stubborn. If you hadn't had if you hadn't if you had that much strength, you should have gone ahead and killed Roa. What what are you saying? Gasping, I managed to suck in air. Kill Roa? 
That means to kill myself, right? Well, to fight and kill myself rather than running away may indicate a strong heart, but you don't seem to understand. Shaky. Your eyes do not kill the body, but the meaning, existence itself. The death of things. Those points are not something that kills the body. It is not. It does not mean you're killing their life. That kind of power is very common in this world. Shaky, your unique eyes. They kill the meaning of things. What is destroyed is the existence. The extinguishing of life is only a side effect that comes afterwards. With your power, it's possible to kill the soul without harming the body. Usually, a body without a soul will cease to live, so it is like suicide. But that's different for you right now, right? Because you have two souls and one body. Well, it's always the case that the weaker one lose. You do seem to be about even right now with Roa. I suppose there is a higher probability that you both will disappear. Hey, hey, wait! What are you... No, I won't wait. No, I won't wait. That's fucking... That's, that's fucked up. That's crazy. I hear a sound from behind my head. Her body pushes up against my shoulders. I'm down. And in an instant, without me knowing what's going on, Arakai has me pinned down. Oh, that's scary as fuck. I'm not gonna lie. That's scary as fuck. Arakai glares at me without speaking. Her body weighed against my shoulders. She stops as if hesitating over what to do with me. I gasp. But it might have just been her silence. This close. Now that we're so close, I may be able to see it. I stare at her body. The core of my brain screams in protest. Completely unlike the pain of my headache before. As if it really were tearing itself apart. But it's no good. I can't read the death from an existence like Arakai. Daytime might be different, but at night, she's close to a perfect life form that doesn't even carry the concept of death. What do you intend to do with Roa, Arakai? You said you wouldn't kill me, but as long as I live, Roa will still be alive. I don't care about a diluted Roa. Yes, that's why I could have let you go, Shiki. Oh, you don't have to hold back. Go ahead, let me go. Don't worry about me and go home. Go back to your daddy. But you know, isn't it natural for me to take back my own power? And more than anything, I do like you. Squeeze. The body weight on my shoulders become even heavier. More than killing you and destroying Roa, I want to take you in. So I won't kill you, her red eyes seem to say. I can't believe it, but it seems I really like you. That's why I'll save you. I won't suck your blood and I won't do anything and I won't do anything you won't like. So please, listen to what I tell you, her red eyes say. Those are, without a doubt, her true feelings. Look. My mind's telling me yes. But my body, my body's telling me this is the shield route. So I'm going to do what I think will lead me to shield. If I obey Arukai, that's like choosing Arukai. But since I've already gone this deep into shield, I'm gonna do what I think means choosing shield. So I'm not obeying Arukai. Fuck you! But I can't listen. She might not be on guard right now, as the perfection is fading from her body. Shiki, or do you hate me? Her eyes look straight at me. I look at her face while being pinned down. Sincerely, so strongly it might burn my brain. I don't hate you, Arakai. Really? She sounds very happy. My forehead is burning. As my brain throbs horribly, I definitely see just one line of death. But I have to refuse. The one I love is Sheila, not you, Arakai! Her eyes brim over with anger. But before then, I slice through the line on her neck. She's not gonna die though, right? Like she, like she's got most of her power back, so she'll regenerate after a while, right? Ah! Fresh blood spilling from her neck, Arakai collapses. Slipping out from underneath her, I get away. Ah! I'm out of breath. I'm not hurt, but I can't run in this state. 
It's Arakai. She should be able to heal from such a wound and will come back to attack me again. Ar Arakai. She doesn't even move. Blood flowing over the ground. Her white body is covered in vermilion. No way. Did I kill her? What? Arakai, I... Stopping my legs, I tried to flee. I tried to rush towards her body, but gasped. One arm. One of her arms is on a collapsed figure. Like a spider's leg stands up on the ground. In that instant, the whole world freezes over. I will. Oh, shit. From her neck spills her blood and her breath. Her arm tenses. Kill you. Shit. Arakai, my fault. The vermilion blood continues to flow. Her body lifts slowly from the ground. I will. Heavy, rapid breathing turns into laughter. Her white body stained in blood. She raises her face. I can see her eyes gleaming between her golden hair. Her eyes are pitch black, and in them glows a fierce fire we read. I will kill you. Her eyes are looking at nothing. She tries to lift herself with one hand, but every time she collapses back to the ground. She slips on her own pool of blood, and each time her body gets redder. Nigga, run! Over and over, she tries to stand up, slips and falls, and sees she's enjoying the cycle of failure. Nigga, run! Run! Just wait. I can't move. Nigga, move! Her voice, her figure, her will. Flows compuls compulsorily through into my head. My will is flowing, fusing, merging. The whole world spins around me. In the middle of it all, her image dominates. That's right. I've never felt such shame before. I've never been so disgraced. That's why it's funny. I can't even imagine how much pleasure I get when I take this anger out on you, Shiki. Destroy, destroy, destroy. Slowly, completely, gently, beyond comparison. Cruelly to the point of numbness, I'll violate your life. That's right. The instant I tear off your limbs, rip open your chest, pull out your intestines, biting into your neck as you ask for mercy, chewing through your eyes and spreading your brains on the ground like butter. Just wait, I'll kill you soon! Smiling, laughing insanely, Arakite wallows in a sea of her own blood. I can't move. This isn't good. Even Roa can't move. <laughs> if I stay here, I really will be killed. I have to escape. It doesn't matter where. If I don't get out of here quickly, I'll be killed. But my legs won't move. Maybe they know. That no matter where I run, she'll kill me. Tono! What are you doing? This way! That voice. That voice frees me from fear's grip. Senpai! Just hurry up! Before she recovers, hurry! Ignoring my bewilderment, she grabs my arm and starts to run. Hey, Senpai, why? It doesn't matter. I'm the one who wants to ask. Tono, you unfaithful cheater. After I told you not to leave my place, why didn't you go meet Arakai? No, this isn't the time to be calling me an unfaithful cheater. S Senpai, that's not it. Um, I'm, I'm sorry for leaving the room, but I couldn't resist it. So I went outside and Arakai was there. Jeez, I hear excuses later. No, we have to hurry. Shio keeps running this direction. It seems she's heading for the school. After running here, Shio finally stops. Senpai, what the hell is going on? I understand why we got away from Arakai, but why don't we go to the school? Here, nothing else will get destroyed. Please, go into the school building ahead of me. What? Why? Arakai is coming. Please, escape, Tono. Arakai is coming. Is she gonna chase us this far? I don't think that'll happen. Certainly, she was pretty screwed up that time, but um, listen, listen without getting angry. Huh? Wait, oh, Chicky's the one saying this. I don't think that'll happen. Certainly, she was pretty screwed up that time, but um, please listen without getting angry. She really is a good person. 
I overdid it earlier and she got pissed, but if she recovers and calms down, she should. It's useless. In the first place, Roa, who is her enemy, is inside of you. And in addition, you wounded her that much. Right now, she's turned into a bloodthirsty vampire. She probably won't turn into, turn back into the Arakaj you know until she kills you. What? She'll be done healing soon, I imagine. She mutters and grabs my arm. We might have a bit of a chance inside the school building. In any case, to protect you, I have to settle it with her once and for all. She'll. When she's active, her subordinate Roa also gets active. To suppress Ro, we, need, we must let her sleep or fend her off. So defeating her here is killing two birds with one stone. Let's go, she says as she pulls me into the school building. At night, the hallway is illuminated only by the moonlight. I think back to the events of last night. Seems I have no, no good memories whatsoever of my school that night. Please. <coughs> I almost just choked on something. Please, go up to the second floor, Tono. Fighting her is my duty. No, this is my responsibility, so you go up to the second floor, senpai. I'll settle this. Tono, I'll get mad. She'll glares at me, but she seems to be getting more timid than angry. Uh, senpai. Tono, you know about my body, right? No matter what happens, I won't die, but a trivial wound could be fatal for you. Certainly, you might be able to defeat Arakai using your eyes, but before that, she would just shred you apart. Tono, didn't you even say it yourself that you'll make me happy? So I beg of you, please, don't die here. But Senpai, by yourself, you can't. Don't belittle me, please. I've already exterminated scores of vampires before. When it comes to defeating vampires, there's no one better than me. She strikes a confident, gutsy pose, but... I see the tips of her fingers shaking. Is she scared? Even for her, who has exterminated, who's exterminated numerous vampires. No, because she has, she knows Arakite isn't a normal opponent. No, Simpa. Even still, I, I don't want to leave Shield by herself and run away. Before I can voice that thought, she presses a finger to my lips and stops me. Tono, you shouldn't say that. Please listen to my selfishness. For once, for once, I want to protect you out of my own will. If I don't do that, I'll never be able to face you with a smile from my heart. She says this with she says that with tears brimming in her eyes. Tono, I came back this early because it was no good. There isn't a way to help you at the church. The only thing there was, only only thing there was, were ways to try and use Roa to their advantage, and there wasn't anything that could help you as his host. I see. Oh well, it can't be helped. It's not something for you to cry about, Shu. No! If only I was better. I could have found something more, but I couldn't. That's why. The only thing I can do now is to slow Roa's advance. It hurts. Even though I know the pain you're going through, I'm only selfishly thinking of thinking that I want you by my side as long as possible. I don't want to see her cry. I embrace her so I won't be able to see it. Oh no, it's okay. I want to be with you as much as I can too. No matter how much it hurts, I'll fight Roa until the very end. If we weren't being selfish, I'm the one being selfish. But, but that, don't get me wrong. I don't intend to lose to Roa. Before, Arakai said something weird. So maybe, there just might be a way left. Shield, I won't lose. But my chances of stopping Arakite are slim. That's why I leave it to you. You're unbeatable against vampires, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Shield's arm around my Shield's arm around my back tightens. As we hold each other, I try to put my lips on hers. Then Shield hops back like a rabbit. We can't kiss, fuck nigga. If you do such a thing, I'll be too happy and wouldn't be able to concentrate. So let's just keep it as a hug for now. Yeah, then I'll go away, but if you get in trouble, just call out for me. I'll come right away. She'll nod silently. I put my trust in her and turn around. Please wait. Did you, for did you forget something? Yes. Tomorrow, let's go play. The three of us with Inui will make up for that one time. 
she says so with a fleeting smile. I'm glad. I'm glad that our promise meant so much to her. Yeah. Then it's a promise. I stick out my hand. Yes, please keep it this time. Shield's hand touches mine. After a vigorous shake, she pulls back. Now please, get the fuck away. Her recovery seems to have completed just now. Yeah. Nodding, I really turn my back to Shield this time. It's quiet. I walk up the second floor while holding my knife and take a deep breath. I believe in Shield. If she says she'll protect me, she'll definitely do so. Idiot. But I feel the same way too. Just like she told me that she'll protect me, I want to protect her too. That's why I'm going to go back there right away. Even Araka should have an opening when she's fighting Shield. In that instance, I'll give everything I have. I'll deal with you later, okay, Roa? I speak to myself as I look up at the moon. After I fend off Arakai, I have to walk a tightrope with a very low chance of succeeding. There's no guarantee I'll succeed or survive. And in the first place, I don't even know if this method will work. But there's nothing else to do. If you have that power, Someone told me before that, there's, that there is a meaning behind having such a power, and a time will come when I will need that power. Yeah, that's right. This is probably my duty, Sensei. I'm prepared. And I want you to have to figure out how to get our cut. Ah! The, the building shakes! A large crash! An impact like a dump truck slamming into the building at full speed! Damn, this bitch is mad. No way. The building is still shaking. It hasn't even been a minute since Shield said Arakad was done healing. From the park to here, such a distance. She came in just that amount of time? That's different. That severity is entirely different from the Arakad I know. Senpai! Who cares about taking her opening right now? Without thinking I run with all my might. It's a nightmare. Shield and Arakad are in the hallway. In reality, that's all there is. That's all, but my legs freeze. This air. The air isn't normal. Everything. Everything. It's difficult to breathe as this whole place is filled with Arakai's vampiric will. Like I'm inside some living thing. In the middle of it all, a fight between Shield and Arakai ended really easily. So one-sided. Damn! She didn't stand a chance! Oh my goodness! It's senpai! It's far. Across a seemingly infinite span, Shield is almost killed by Arakai. Shield is almost dead, and she doesn't seem to be she doesn't seem to see anything but Arakai. Arakai's arm reaches for Shield's chest. With a sickening sound, she tries to rip out Shield's heart. That's too much. Even if she says she won't die, pulling out her heart while she's still alive is too much. Stop! Arakai turns around. She looks like she's staring at an insect. Oh, shit. Just that causes me to forget that I'm alive. Oh, you're here too. Wait there, I'll be finished soon. Saying that, Arokai destroys Shield. She didn't kill Shield. She didn't... She didn't kill Shield. She didn't end Shield. She didn't finish Shield. She destroyed Shield. Oh my goodness. She snaps Shield's neck as she repeatedly tears her body apart with her other arm. Damn, bitch! Who pissed you off? Oh, wait, I did. <laughs> My bad. Pretty stubborn, huh? I guess you won't die unless Roa is killed, Shield. Slash. Splat. A cycle like she, like she, a cycle like she says she experienced at the church. A cycle of reviving and dying. If I take in Roa, you have to continue living until I die. In order for you to die, you'd have to kill Roa with the Holy Sword of Reincarnation criticism prepared by the church. So what? Shield painfully responds, half conscious. Is that all right with you? Roa's death means your death. If you destroy Roa, your body will return to normal, boring human body. That's what I wish for. I see. How pitiful. Your wish won't be granted. We're gonna take Roa back this time for sure. By slicing apart that lump of flesh over there a hundred times. Shield's body convulses. Arakai rips out Shield's heart. 
Even still, Shield revives and coughs up blood. Art! Something snaps. My headache rages. I feel sick. You shut the hell up! I slam my head into the wall. Look. This isn't the time to pay attention to him. I can't let her lay even one more finger on Shield. Look. Give your, give your brain a strain that can burst your blood vessels and look. 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 Looking at the death that would kill that vampire. Why? I almost go crazy. The death of animals. The death of plants. I can even see the death of the air before me. But Arokai has nothing which can cause death on her. Before, someone told me that true ancestors are a perfect life just by being in this natural world. They are an extension of nature, so they can draw as much power from the source called Earth. That's why they won't die. They have no limits. Oh. Oh. So that means they're only perfect in this natural world. Look for it. It has to exist. If I can see the death of everything, the point has to be exist somewhere. I was mistaken. There are no causes of death on Arakai. In that case, I have to take that which makes it so I found it. It's far away, but I can't allow any more of this. Arukai! Her hand stops. Follow me. I'll kill you out there. Saying that, I jump out of the window and onto the school grounds. In the center of the ground, it's far. Can I make it? Arukai pursues me with light footsteps. It's far. It's far, but I'll strike first this time. Ha! I reach for the middle of the school ground. Arakai comes straight at me. Before that, I take my knife and start stab the large point at my feet, the death of the very world around me. A distortion. With this, it's over. Everything around here I killed. The nature that Arakai draws all of her power from. You've thought well, Shiki. Arakai comes towards me. Her body is filled with death now. All right, I can do it. I can kill Arakai like this, but before I claim my victory. Go! Blood pours from my mouth. Huh? Probably because their movements were so fast. I just couldn't believe it, and I didn't feel pain or shock or anything. The slicing sound finally reaches my ears. The sound of blood pouring forth. Looking down, Arakai's claws pierced through my chest before I even realized it. Ah, I feel faint. Everything starts to fade away quickly. Her arm is thrust through my chest, impaling me. That, that's a fatal wound for a normal human being. Ah, but I won't die just yet. With the way I am now, I sh I'll still be able to live for a bit longer. From my ankles, the pitch black shadow of death starts to creep upwards. Ah, uh, I don't care. I forcefully swallow the blood pouring from my mouth and slice the line on her chest with one hand. <coughs> Arakai's voice, I can barely hear it. My head, my head is fading. Is it the pain from Arakai piercing my chest? Or is my brain about to burn out from being strained to the limit? Well, whichever it is, it doesn't change the fact that my death is coming. I start to feel faint. But before that, with this knife, I have to cut her line. Disappear, you vampire! Don't fool around, I won't die with such a thing! Her hands grab my head. But faster than Arakai's hands can squeeze my head, I slice the knife down to her thigh. Just go away! I'll take Roa with me. Without your help, I'll kill him. So disappear. I don't want to fight you. What are you saying? You're the one who refused me. Her grip increases. The sound of my skull fracturing. I'll kill Roa right here. I told you I won't go back unless I do so. You, you stupid woman. My knife swings again. With a slice, I cut off her arm. Her white arm falls to the ground. Arakite staggers back. As soon as I see that I crumble to the ground, like a puppet with its strings cut, I collapse on my rear end. 
Shiggy! I hear Arakai's somewhat hesitating voice. I can't speak well. If I move my throat, the only thing that pours forth is red blood. Shiki! Fading. The pressure and killing Ara Arakai was exerting is fading away. Is it because of her wounds? Or is it because the wounds she gave me were so terrible? She's returning to the Arakai that I once knew. Thank God. I don't know what's so good, but I... Hang in there, Shiki. You become mine, that wound will be nothing. She reaches out to me. With the hazy mind, I lift my hand to stop her. Why? Shiki, you'll die like this, you know? Look, I'll forgive you for earlier, and I won't worry about Shiel either. I don't want you to die, Shiki. So please, please become mine, Shiki. Back and forth. Even though I can barely breathe, I shake my head no. I don't understand. If you die, Roa will just reincarnate. Even you hate Roa, right? If you die like this, it'll just take over your body. Oh yeah, certainly I can't let that happen. But if, if I just follow Arakai, I think the same thing will happen. Even if Arakai sucks my blood, like what happened to Roa, and I gain the willpower so I won't lose to Roa. In the end, Roa will not disappear by his own will unless Arakai turns to acknowledge him. No. I can't do what you say. Why? Do you really, really hate me that much, Shiki? Don't be crazy. Even as a lie, I can't say. Please. I, please. I know how you feel, but please forgive him. Roa simply wanted for you to like him. For that, he reincarnated over and over, was looking forward to your arrival each time. But he's a human. He's not in existence that can live for that long, for a long, long time like you do. Yes, for humans, immortality is too far away. Roa believed his method of reincarnation would let him exist forever. But even that had its limits. Because that method was the same as making descendants which shared his same paths and goals, but not creating another self for him. Rose is as good as gone now. He's just an existence which does the same thing over and over because of his past. So I have to end it for him. Shaky, you are ready. Sanity returns to Arukai's eyes. The deep crimson of her eyes thins to red. Her golden hair flutters underneath the moon. There is the Arakai that I liked. I look up at her as if staring at the moon. Sorry, Shio. I can't help but think she's incredibly beautiful. Those red eyes, those resolute yet friendly eyes, her white slender curves, even the gash I just gave her on her chest that's welling up with blood. Everything about her, she really is. Arakai really is beautiful. That's why it's so unfortunate. The vestiges of my chest tighten at the thought that it has to end like this. Damn it. If only Arakai had returned to sanity just a bit faster, none of this would have had to have to happen. I see, Shiki. You're already one with Roa. I don't know. Just all this was too much. Right now, as I speak, my memories are disappearing. She'll say something like that. That if I try too hard to see something that should not be seen, my blood vessels would burst and I would lose my mind. Shaky, you idiot. Are you saying are you saying you'll let Shield kill you? Of course not. But I'm already like this thanks to you. I probably can't hold on for long. Arakai looks down at herself, her chest, in the large slash wrought by my knife. I don't believe it. Until now, I've never met someone who could wound me this much. There's a faint glimmer of resentment and regret in her voice. It really is too bad, but it looks like I'm at my limit as well. I need to return to my castle quickly and heal this wound. Right. So you just hurry up and get out of here. She doesn't answer. There probably wasn't even a brief pause. Just for that instant. It's probably that I wanted to treasure the last moment before we parted. 
Arakad gives an amazed sigh. You're such a mean guy. You say mean things until the very end. But you know what? I like that about you, Shiki. Saying that, with a smile until the very end, her body disappears like fading mist. I see. We were the same after all. Thinking that aloud, I look up at the moon. In the end, it really was just a brief moment, but we both returned to the relationship we had when we first teamed up together. I really liked her. It had nothing to do with the row inside me. Just, she attracted me. That's why parting like this, after we were fighting only moments ago, was too painful. Why did it turn out like this? Our relationship. I don't think we made that many big mistakes. Gah! The blood doesn't stop. I try to breathe, but blood just flows forth from my mouth like a pump. I'm almost gone. Araka should have taken it easy on me. If I get such a big hole in my chest, even a half vampire like me can't be saved. Thump. It's not my heart. The beating of my heart has long since stopped. The only pulse remains in my head. Probably because I strained myself too hard to get Arakai back. I, Tono Shiki, begins to fade and Roa becomes stronger. My body is almost completely dead. After I die, Roa will take over. Even though I can't, Roa will probably find a way to heal himself. If that happens, I'd make the same mistake Shield did. Sorry. That's all I can say. Thump. I really can't keep conscious. Before that, I look at myself. The point is on my scar. The point of my death, of Roa's death. Tono, you said it yourself. That you'd make me happy. So please, don't die here. That's why all I can do is apologize. I can't ask for forgiveness. Even though I wanted to do so much, it turns out that I won't be able to do anything for her. Then at least in the very end, I should release her from her terrible fate. Taking a deep breath, I place my knife on my chest. The point is at the tip of my knife. All that is left is for me to push. Just that. Stop. I can hear a voice. It has to be a hallucination. Tono! A crying voice calls out from the school building. Looking up, I see a fully healed shield running towards me. Stop it. If I see her face, I'll lose my resolve. Probably, I'll feel sorry and be unable to finish this. That's why before she comes, I strengthen the power in my hand. The knife slides silently into my body, and with just that, the voice disappears. An old book. I thought I saw an illusion of it disappearing page by page into the darkness. With that, I was able to fall into the deep darkness I fell into years ago. Tono! Tono! I hear a voice. Tono, why? See? Just as I thought. No. I don't want this! If I heard this crying voice. Why? You said you wouldn't die! I knew I would regret it. Fuck! Holy shit! Daylight Blue, the epilogue. What the fuck? It was a hospital room that somehow seemed nostalgic. Ah, <sighs> I let out a breath. I'm alive. My chest moves up and down as I breathe. A comfortable breeze blows in through an open window. The yellow curtains sway playfully in the wind. The fresh blue sky is enough to take away my breath. 
The air is warm like a spring day. I am alive. I look around as I speak to myself in amazement. There's no one else in the spacious room. I'm lying in a I'm lying in bed with an IV in my right arm. There's a large bandage on my chest. What's this? I take out the IV and remove my bandage. There's nothing under the bandage, only my chest. Having a bandage there means there's a wound there, but there's not a trace whatsoever of anything. I tilt my head to the side questioningly. Did I do something to get a wound on my chest? I look over to the open door. From the empty hallway, some unknown child peers into the room. Before I can call out, the child walks away out somewhere, walks away somewhere. What was that just now? Something. I feel like I forgot something. Tano, I'm coming in. Oh, Tano, I'm coming in. Yo, you're up. Good, good. We really couldn't talk much yesterday, but you seem a lot better now. He cheerfully walks over to the side of the bed. Arahiko, what are you doing? Huh? What am I doing? I'm here to check up on you. You asked me that yesterday too. You must still be out of it. Check up on who? I'm sure your head would space out after sleeping for two months, but don't keep asking me the same thing you asked yesterday. It's about your body, so didn't the doctor tell you about it? Saying that, Arahiko takes a seat in a nearby chair. Huh? I get even more confused as I hold my head. Oh, the doctor didn't say anything. You've been here for a long time, you know? Yeah. Well, I kind of figured that out, but... Mm, the doctor said you might not know what's going on. Well, I guess it can't be helped. I guess it's more friendly for me to tell you than having a doctor tell you. Crossing his arms and nodding to himself, Arahiko looks at me in the eye. It was two months ago. You were found collapsed on the ground at school. Ground? Why is it... Now that he mentions it, I feel like I know something. Seems a track and field club found you during their morning practice. They come at around 5 o'clock in the morning, so they say you must have collapsed there during the night. But what's the truth? Even if you ask, I don't know. First of all, you said I was collapsed on the school grounds, but I never even go near there. Right. Well, anyway, you were found there collapsed. You weren't hurt or bleeding, so you were taken to the clinic because they thought it was your anemia. But you never woke up. So we called your house, and then you were brought to this hospital. You've been in a coma for about two months since then. Arahiko tells me an amazing story. A coma for two months, that's usually... Yeah, even the doctor seemed to have thrown in a towel. To be in a coma for a week means you're a vegetable. Then yesterday you just woke up and said, Yo, Arahiko! I thought my heart would stop. <laughs> he laughs heartily. Thank God. I did not know where this was going and I was terrified. For like at first I thought we were gonna kill Arukai and I was like, no, I don't want that. I love Arukai. Then after that I thought we were gonna have to kill ourselves and I was like, no, I don't want that. I want Sheila and um Shiki to be happy together. But this was perfect. Well, you were always the kind of guy who could have died any moment anyway. So since I was thinking you'd be like that forever, it surprised me even more. Arahika. I'm in that kind of situation and you're saying pretty mean things. It's fine because you're healed. But it was quite the amazing time while you were a vegetable. Even though they said you had no hope of recovery, Akia came and visited you every day. Senpai would come, come there at that time too, so it was really hard to be here. Arahiko gives a meaningful laugh. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, Arahiko. What's with that Akiha-chan? Akiha-chan is Akiha-chan. It's your younger sister, and every time we see each other here, our relationship gets closer and farther. Akiha. So she came to see me. Hearing that, I remember about Akiha. Like Arahiko said, I must still be out of it. It's like I forgot everything outside of this hospital room. Well, I remember whenever he tells me about it, so it doesn't really matter but I feel really light and feel like something strange. You met Akiha? Sorry, Arahiko. She's pretty uptight, right? She says some harsh things sometimes, but please overlook it. 
Pretty. Sometimes. Amazing, Tano. I never thought you were that great a guy until now. Sitting in the chair with his arms still crossed, he laughs out loud. Arihiko is like he usually is. To be honest, I don't know what happened to me, but his infinite supply of cheerfulness does calm me down. Ah. <sighs> Leaning back on the bed, I take a deep breath, deep breath. Oh, it's about time for your examination. Then I'll see you later. I was gonna bring Senpai along, but she said she wouldn't come because she knew she was gonna see you at school. Senpai? Yeah. We've been taking turns seeing you. Well, yesterday you woke up and hugged her right away, so she got kind of angry and said she wouldn't come here anymore. She was angry, so you should think up an excuse or something. Saying that, Arahiko leaves the room. Senpai? I can't quite remember. To me, there's only one person who I call Senpai. That person's name, face, and personality, I know them all. So why? Why do I feel like I shouldn't think deeply about this senpai? I feel light. It's probably because I've been asleep for two months and my body doesn't move at all. I feel like something is missing. Come to think of it, there's one other thing that's strange. I remember seeing this hospital room before, but if my memory serves me correctly, that hospital room from eight years ago has to have been long gone by now. Where the f where is this going? The following day I returned to the mansion. Probably because I was asleep for so long. It feels like forever since I've been back in my own house. Before I go to the door to the mansion, I take a walk in the wood and come out to a strange place. I never knew it. I never knew there was a Japanese style building like this here. I hear a commotion behind me. I whirl around and see some kid just standing there. Is that supposed to be like younger Shiki? The fuck is this? Did he get lost? He seems quite detached, almost like a ghost or something. It's just on his chest. That scar on his chest showing through his kimono is terribly. Shiki, what are you doing? Uh, Kohaku. Yes, I came to greet you. I was waiting for you by the doorway, but you headed towards the garden instead. I was a little surprised. As usual, Kohaku has that cheerful smile. While I was just walking around, Kohaku, do you know who that kid is? Huh? A kid? What do you mean? Seems like Kohaku didn't see that kid. Nah, if you didn't see him, that's fine. Shall we go back? Aki is probably waiting. Yes, Akiha didn't say anything, but she was pacing back and forth in the lobby all morning. I'm sure she's anxiously waiting for you, Shiki. Oh. Then I should hurry up or who knows how mad at me she'll get. Yes, let's hurry, Shiki. Gohaku takes my hand and we run to the mansion. As we leave, I felt like someone called me and I looked back at the Japanese-style building. Is it an illusion? That kid just stares as we run towards the mansion, as if he wanted to say something. Even if something does seem missing, the life of Tono Shiki returns to normal. I'm back at the mansion. Akiya scolds me. He so he wakes me up in the morning. And after eating, eating the breakfast Kohaku made, I leave the mansion. There's something missing. Without being able to remember what it is, I get to school. Yo, morning. You can come back to school now? Arihiko greets me cheerfully. I heard you had to rehabilitate for a while. I see. For you to come back to school like this, you must, it must be because of that. Arihiko gives a meaningful laugh. I understand. It's only a month until graduation. That means you can be together for a little, for a bit longer. Hmm? What do you mean? Together with who? With who? Of course you and... Arihiko cuts off. I hear quick footsteps. Underneath the bright early spring sunshine. Breathing quickly, she appears before me. Good morning. Great weather today, isn't it, Tono? She gives a usual smile. Senpai. I gasp. That's right. Why couldn't I remember about her until now? Tono. Um, I said good morning. 
Yeah, good morning, senpai. I reply awkwardly. She seems a bit puzzled and tilts her head. Jeez, you finally got out of the hospital, but you're not cheerful at all. I was so looking forward to seeing you again. Looking forward to... Why can't I remember? Did something happen? I feel like something very important happened between the two of us, but I can't remember. All I can remember is that she's a third year upperclassman who took a liking to me at Arahiko for some reason, and that we would spend lunchtime together. I can't remember. I can't remember anything else. It's like I forgot about everything else because it was so sad or difficult that I cut unneeded memories away. Jeez, Tono, did you forget our promise? Senpai looks at me disappointedly. Promise. Promise. An important promise. Hey, you said that the three of us would hang out in town, but you collapsed the day before that and had to go to the hospital. She looks like she was really looking forward to that little thing. So I didn't really care about anything else. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Please, don't forget it this time, Tona. No, you can go ahead and forget it, Tona. The senpai and I can have fun by ourselves. Arahiko repeats what I heard some time before. That won't do. We may not have a chance to do this again, so this time it has to be the three of us. She seems unusually angry. That, that, that's not true. We're still students, so we can always hang out. Yes, certainly, you and Tona will have lots of free time, but I will be very busy starting in spring. The university I plan on attending is a little far, so it will not be easy to come back here. Ah, that's right. Senpai, you. Arahiko stops mid-sentence. I don't understand what she's talking about, though. Yes, after I graduate, I plan on going overseas to study. It's always been my dream to become a master at crafting cakes. But such a sen you're going overseas to learn how to cook? I mean, I guess this is the old time, so I can't really say fucking YouTube it, but I can't say Google it like this is the old days, but damn. With such a smile, Senpai says something outrageous. Senpai, then you won't be staying here? Yes, I'll stay here. My house is here, so I don't plan on going to live over there. I can't exactly leave my father alone either. But the person I'll be studying under is very strict, so I won't be able to come back for at least three years. What? But it's always been my childhood dream. The place I'm going to work in as a living employee is a craftsman for the king. Normally, non-relatives aren't allowed to work there, but he told me I had great talent, so I'm able to work there. Senpai happily speaks of another world I didn't even know existed. Oh, that's great, but... She'll be gone for three years. Why? Yes, thank you very much. Three years is a long time, but you can wait that long, right, Tono? Senpai gives a faint smile to hide her embarrassment. Now, don't be unfaithful because I'm gone, Tono. You have a tendency to get swept away easily, so really, I want to take you with me. Senpai sighs. Huh? Um, Senpai. But that just can't be. You're still a student, and it will be impossible to convince Akiha in a year or two. So this time, I'll just trust you and leave you for three years. Senpai declares this fiercely. Arahiko takes all this in with, her, with his mouth hanging wide open. So? This may be the last time when the three of us get to play together. So this time, please, let me make a good memory out of it. She sounds truly happy as she says this. Rob, it feels like the scar on my chest hurts. Tona, what's wrong? Grabbing your chest like that, are you still hurt? Ah, uh, no, not really. My chest was never injured, so it's just your imagination. As I answer, I feel it feels strange. It's like something is inconsistent. There's a lot of inconsistencies here. The first bell rings. Morning home room is about to start. Then I'll come again at lunch break, okay? Senpai disappears towards the school building. Before she can do that, I ask her a question. Senpai, your father, what kind of person is he? Huh? Tono, you know my father, don't you? My family has a bakery at, at the nearby town and you came to buy from there before. What? 
At first, I thought she was referring to Roa. Like, y'all know how she be so fucking literal with shit, right? Like, she's, like, extremely literal. Like, when she said farewell, she literally meant, like, farewell. I won't see you until tomorrow, so farewell. Like, she's extremely literal and exaggerating. So I was thinking, like, when she was talking about her father, she meant Roa. And she was saying, like, because Roa was inside of us, like, you know, that was just her silly way of saying she has to stay with her father. But... Now I'm fucking confused. My father said he was such a pleasant young man too. She sounds truly happy as she says this. Now that she mentions it, I think it did happen. But that's wrong. Senpai, there's no way your father can be alive. Tona? Senpai calls out to me. Everything suddenly turns colder. You realized it, Tono. She asked me somewhat sadly. Yeah, I did. I say that as tears fill my eyes. I wish I never realized it. Then I could have continued to live happily in this world where no one gets hurt. Amazing. Normally people would normally people would never realize it. Usually they ignore all the inconvenient inconsistencies. Yeah. Even if it was a little strange. If I was happy, I should have ignored it. That's right. To not be able to lie about such things, you really are honest. Senpai. The girl who looks like Senpai says this with incredible sadness. I really feel sorry and regret tightens in my chest, but it really couldn't be helped. My school life from before, the shield that seems she's lived in this town, the Tono Shiki who survived that wound without a single scar on his chest. These days, similar to the original days without a single moment of unhappiness. That was just too happy. And I knew this was a dream. Jeez, you're always like this, Tono. Even though you overlook so many trivial things, you realize the one thing that you really wish you wouldn't. But that's one of your good traits, I suppose. But still, she looks at me regretfully. You should have at least looked over it this time. Well, shit, I guess that means no happy ending. Senpai disappears. And so does the world. It disappears in a sense. Oh, yeah! He did destroy the fucking earth, didn't he? I forgot. Or did he just destroy the area around him? I don't remember. He disappears the same way. And everything disappears. The world returns to the way it should be. I died. No, if I was dead, I, I even wouldn't be having this such a scene. Having, I even wouldn't have seen such a dream. So I might be on the very verge of death then. Well, anyway, it's certain that this is... It's certain that this has to be quite close to death. Strangely, I'm not afraid. No matter if I'm already dead or about to disappear, or I've already disappeared. Right now, that person is more important to me than myself. Senpai. That person who was smiling before me earlier, Shiel, who has so happily told me this fairy tale without pain or suffering. A completely ordinary life, a story as she wanted. No sadness at all, just a very commonplace life, a radiant world. To me or Arahiko, it was a completely boring repetition of days without any value. That, that boring thing was, to her, it was an unfulfillable dream. Thinking aloud, I feel sad. I selfishly ended my life. I didn't think deeply about what would happen afterwards. If this, is, if this was what her dream was, then no matter how terrible I, I become or how pitiful I become, maybe I should have stayed beside her, being helped by her and protecting her. That is the wish of the person called Sheil. It is not the wish of... That is the wish of the person called Sheil. It is not the wish of you yourself as Shiki, so you don't need to worry about it, right? Huh? Tono Shiki is acting on what he thought was the best choice. You don't need to burden yourself with what Sheil wants. If you do that, you'll be burdened by someone else's dream like earlier. Although there's no one other than me here anymore, I can hear someone else's voice. Yeah. 
You woke yourself from the dream, so there's nothing else here besides Shiki. I see. You can use a brain a little, Tono Shiki. Then you are... No. I don't want you to get the wrong impression. Ro was killed by you already. In the first place, if Roa still existed, then there would be no way you could exist. Even though you're already dead. I don't quite get it. What am I right now? Let's see. Maybe you're on the verge of losing yourself? The time you stabbed yourself and the time you died. I think this is that brief time and a brief moment in between the two. Something snaps. I see a projection of the familiar hospital room. A thing called a dream cannot be something completely unknown. Any story is only an extension of what the person knows. So the dream you saw has some truth about reality, such as, like becoming a vegetable without gaining consciousness. Yeah, that at least is true. After you stabbed yourself, you were still left without waking up. This incident, this incident really is just a small gap of time between the two. When you wake up from this dream, you'll be simply be comatose, not even able to dream. And what will happen to Senpai? I don't know. But shouldn't you think about yourself more than, more than other people? It won't be bad, so just close your eyes again. This time, try not to wake up. If you do that, then you can watch that happy dream again. I don't understand. Who are you? Hey. It doesn't really matter. If you wake up, you won't even be able to dream. You'll just be a pile of organs, you know? So it's better to just sink back into that dream. You really did well. It's too bad for that person's shield, but you and I also had horrible luck. So I think we could at least see a happy dream, you know? So, who are you? Huh? You just said that earlier yourself. Since you woke up from that dream, there's nothing else here besides Shiki. So I must be. So I must probably look like this. Kid. Hey, excuse yourself. I'm a year older than you, you know? Tono Shiki is only eight years old, right? With that in mind, I've existed for almost nine years. Then you are... That's it. I was cast away until now. But since you fell into the same place, I called out to you. So it's not like we're actually separate people. We're the same existence after all. Even if you forgot, you're the shaky that is an extension of me. But in my case, I'm your foundation but not your past, so I'm just trash. Well, it is difficult to talk about it, so let's just leave it aside. I don't understand. Then what does that trash want to make me do? That's what I've been saying. I'm warning you not to wake up. You, I mean Tono Shiki's reality is nothing more than spending the rest of your life in a coma. If you wake up to that, you won't even be able to dream. Even though you could manage your body, your brain would not function. In other words, death. Not death to your existence, but the death of your will. In that situation, you wouldn't need to die, right? Even if you woke up, you can't live in reality. I'd be much happier if you just watched the dream about reality here. What is that? Even if I just slept for the rest of my life, dreaming selfishly isn't fun at all. That's true. You can either wake up to reality and face the death of your will, or you can stay here and dream. No matter which, there really isn't much of a difference. If you wake up to reality and die, you wouldn't trouble yourself like this. If you call that happiness, it probably is many times happier. What? But I want you to dream. We have the same name, but the dreams we can see are different. My dreams aren't usually about that day, or the days I had until I was nine years old. That may be happy, but there's no future for Shiki there. Which is getting older, having a person you like, living busily every day. My reality, my knowledge, the future I can imagine from that is so small and hopeless that I can't even imagine those things. But your dreams were different. What is normal scenery for you looks brilliant to me, even if they are just dreams. But with my limited years, I can't even think of your dreams by myself. If you can't stand your selfish dream, then I can help a little. I can let you remember the other things you forgot that happened in the past. If we work together to fool each other, we can see a somewhat happy dream. 
Seems you don't like that. I guess once you realize the truth, you have to wake up. But your reality is already over. Certainly, dreams can't compare to reality. But still, if you try, I think you can at least become a bit happy, right? No. Wouldn't we be the only ones becoming happy there, Shiki? It's stupid. It's simple to be happy by yourself. If you start to think about others, it gets much more difficult. As a result, even what's good or bad becomes difficult to figure out. And in reality, you and I never did anything wrong. But this is how we ended up, right? See, that's the person you are, Shiki. You've only had things stolen from you, so you shouldn't worry about making others happy. That may be true, but still I made a promise not to leave her alone. If everything before, if everything right now, if all of it is a dream, I have to wake up. Even if there might be nothing for you to wake up? Even if there might be nothing for you if you wake up? Because she's waiting, I have to go back. Even if it means my death, I promised I'll be there when, where she's waiting. You see, and this is goodbye. I couldn't leave you alone, so I lent you a hand. But like I thought, you don't need me now. All the same, it was really fun. I was able to see a good dream that maybe my future could be like that. What? What's this? Shaking my hand all of a sudden? That's just weird. <laughs> I even felt weird. But it can't be helped because I can't give you it unless we do this. Even though we're the same, if we parted this much, we would need an image to merge. Well, I guess it's useless for me to tell you because you've even forgot about that. Hey, you... You're disappearing. You're starting to form shape. Well, it's about time for our goodbyes. I'll forget about you, so please forget about me. Now, it's meaningless to go back to the shaky before becoming Tarno Shaky. Oh yeah, about her. I like her too. So I agree on the f oh, about her. I like her too. So I agree on the fact that she's more important than you. But you know, if that's the case, never do something stupid again to make her cry, okay? And he disappears. Now maybe he died would be closer in meaning. I feel a strange pain, missing something that I won't be able to get back. I feel sad about something. Even though I tried to remember, I didn't quite grasp that it was nostalgia. So is that Shiki supposed to be a representation of like who he was when he when he still believed when he still knew he was adopted, or like before, like he was hypnotized by his grandfather? Is that who that Shiki is? My consciousness returns. I wake up from a moment's dream. If that dream disappears and I disappear, the only thing waiting for me is death. Aimlessly, the morning light shines. My mind is hazy. I still can't think of anything. My body is collapsed. My head is on something soft. That's strange. I should have woken up from that dream already. I open my eyes. I see her crying face. I just reach out my hand and touch her cheek. Her tears course down my fingers. Without a doubt, these warm tears are real. She doesn't say anything. Neither do I. I don't, I don't feel like words are necessary. I just feel her warmth against me. Thump. The night sky, the moon still hangs from the time Arakai disappeared, and my chest is covered in blood. But that gaping wound is closed. Did she heal me? Or did that wound never exist in the first place? Well, if I'm alive, that's just a trivial matter since I'm able to exist here right now. Tono, can you understand me? The shaking voice. I'm surprised. Senpai, you're really, you're really crying. Yes. Never felt like this before. <laughs> Isn't that a bit much, Senpai? I ramble with my hazy head. I feel spaced out. There's no headache. There's no pain. 
I don't know what happened to Ro or what happened to me. All I know is Sheila is here with me in the morning light. What happiness. What I want, what I want is all right here before me. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I can keep my promise. I say that after a long sigh. What are you saying? Aren't we supposed to go with the newie and hang out today after lunch? After school? So we really don't have time to just sit here all day, do we? She speaks and gives a mischievous smile like before. I see. And I should get up. Ow, shit! As soon as I try to get up, my chest stabs with pain. Oh, don't move yet. It was a big wound, so you should stay like this for at least another hour. Shio. You really contradicted yourself. You know that, right? Oh, yes, it seems so. Seem to have lost my mind since you woke up. She gives a deep blush. Oh, man. I'll be bored if I have to stay like this for another hour. All I can do is move my arms. And she get tired from having my head in her lap for over an hour. Sorry, doesn't this tire you out? You can let me sleep on the ground. Jeez, what are you saying? I'm doing this out of my own will, so please indulge my selfishness. Her cheeks turning even redder. She continues to look at me. And if I stay like this, and if I stayed like this, I thought you might do it. Ah, uh, I remember. Come to think of it, I think we made a promise like that before. Yeah, I want to do so too. Saying that, I reach out to her face with my only free arm. She quietly lowers her face. Our lips meet deeply. After what feels like an hour, we separate. I'm speechless. Since that last, for real, I feel like I've woken from a long sleep. First, good morning, Sheil. Yes, good morning, Tono. Since her smiling face and her tears are more glorious than anything on this earth, I relax and close my eyes. Huh? Tono, Tono! Mm, sorry, senpai. I, I want to sleep a little longer. I really felt relaxed and all my tiredness returned. If I can, I want to sleep in Senpai's arms, but I don't think that's possible. You can just put me somewhere, so when classes start, wake me up. She sounds a little disappointed, but really, I'm sleepy right now. I've seen this before in another game. I've seen this before in another game. If you played that game, you know what I'm talking about. I've seen this exact shit before in another fucking game. Please don't let it turn out how it turned out. Please don't do this. Come on. Don't let this shit turn out like that, like it did in that fucking game. Don't do this shit to me. I understand. Then I'll carry you to my room, but is it okay? Uh, isn't that bad? We'll miss school if we do that. It's okay, let's skip for today. Besides, there are a lot of things I want to ask you about, Tana. And then I feel myself being lifted. Hey, Senpai, the clinic is fine. We don't have to go to your room. Denied. Tana, you have to tell me what you did with Arakai when I wasn't there. Shield smiles as she holds me. There's enough intensity to almost banish any traces of sleepiness away. Thank God. Let's go. The sun is just rising, so if we hurry, no one will see us. Senpai, help. Then let's go. The sun is rising, so if we hurry, no one will see us. Senpai, that's why the clinic is so much But ah! With the lights stop, Shio takes a huge leap. I feel weightless, like I'm floating in space. At this rate, we really will be at Shio's apartment soon, but... Whew. I feel like I really have fallen in love with a surprising person. But I'm more than prepared. Even though I've settled the problem with Roa, Senpai has her own problems as well. I don't think we can return to a peaceful life. But even still, I've decided to be with this person already. No matter what happens in the future, we get through it together. That's right, Shiki. Oh, that's right, Shiki. I whispered to the person in my dream. Well then, first things first, 
I have to start seriously thinking about what I should tell her about Arakai. Nasu, you motherfucker! Nasu, you motherfucker! Shit was beautiful! I almost got tears going down my eyes. Hold on, let me hear this shit. I probably, I was expecting it to have lyrics so I wasn't talking, but I can go in and give my thoughts now. First of all, this was awesome. Every, fuck, every time I finish or beat like a route in a visual novel, so far, it's always just made me like so fucking glad that I decided to start visual novels. When I first finished um, the Fate Route, Dog, after that, I was like, man, I, I think after I finished the Fate Route, I think I just bought a fuck ton of visual novels because I was like, I'm definitely playing more of these type of games. Finishing episode one of Umi Neko, man. Oh my goodness. And then now I'm finishing this shit. Like, I can't, I, I really cannot wait to get into more of these, into more of this game. Ah, fuck. But before I get into this, you already know I gotta do Fate. But y'all can definitely expect all the routes of this game. Especially after how amazing this route was. Oh my goodness. Shield's lesson? Sure. You've reached Shield's true ending. Well done. Each heroine with one exception has two different kinds of endings. A true ending and a good ending. After reaching one of the endings, please go back a little and re-advance with the story. A different, a different, a different event should wait you. Well then, thank you very much for playing up to this point. Let's meet again somewhere in Tsukihime. What is it called? Daylight Blue, Shield True Ending. Well, I got the true ending. Fucking W, bro. Oh my goodness. Nah, for real though, this game, I'm not gonna say this game. I haven't finished the game yet. I'm definitely playing more of the game, obviously. But this route was fucking amazing. It was great, I loved it, actually. I haven't played that many visual novels, but it's probably one of my like favorite, like probably one of my favorite playthroughs of all the visual novels I've played. So far, my favorite one is definitely the Fate Route and Fate Stay Night that I recently finished a while, a little bit ago. And this is number two. And after this, I think I'm gonna go with episode one of Umi Neko. I'm gonna just count that as a route because that's that's all I've played in the game. But that shit was fucking awesome. But man, 
this was great like for real thank you to nasu for like you know being the, uh, the og for this shit thank you to type moon for you know being the people that made the game with nasu and shit i guess i i think that's how it works right Thank you to the, the, the Mirror Moon, that's what it is, for translating this shit so an English motherfucker like me can read and play it. I appreciate that for real, man. Thank you to, like, deadass. Thank y'all, thank y'all motherfuckers for watching. When I, when I decided to sit down and play some old-ass visual novel, I did not expect to, like, the average damn near 70 to 100 views every fucking video. Y'all don't understand how crazy that is to me, bro. Like, every time I dropped the Tsukihime video and I saw them damn views, and I saw those likes, I saw the love I was getting, bro. Like, it just made me so fucking happy to even be, like, aiming for this shit that I'm aiming for as a content creator. Like, that shit dead ass. Like, y'all don't understand how much, how much y'all support on the Tsukihime and the Fate videos really motivated me to, like, really motivated me to keep pressing forward with my shit, man. But it's especially when my fucking Persona videos was dropping off and the Umi Neko shit wasn't getting a lot of attention and fucking what else? Yeah, you know, of course, Potty never got any damn attention on my channel. That don't really matter right now, though, man, because y'all showed a lot of love for Tsukihime and I haven't uploaded. But right now, the last video of Tsukihime I've uploaded right now was Arokai sucking our dick, right? So everything after that, I only have recorded. I haven't uploaded it yet. But I'm 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 expecting y'all motherfuckers that have kept showing love. And if you get to this point in the fucking series, and I find and, and and you haven't been showing me love like you're supposed to be showing me love, I'ma find your bitch ass. And I'ma hey, I'ma hit you with that motherfucking Tono Shiki special. Take them glasses off. Get my little headache. It's like. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Cut your bitch ass up! But, but peace out, man. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. I can't wait to get to the rest of these routes, but we got some shit to do first.